Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to the Australian Reptile Park. Jake here, and today we're gonna to be talking a little about uh, camouflage. Now, uh, camouflage is an adaptation that a wide variety of animals will use in order to protect themselves. For the most part, um, stay away from predators, keep themselves concealed, but they also sometimes will use camouflage in order to obtain their prey. We're gonna talk a little bit about both of those things uh, here this afternoon. Now, I thought what we might start with is an animal that uh, most people will typically associate with camouflage, and that is the chameleons. Now, chameleons are incredible animals. They're found uh, primarily in Africa um, and also in parts of Europe, and their stronghold is in uh, Madagascar, the island of Madagascar off the southern coast, the southern eastern coast of Africa. And Madagascar actually has about two thirds of the world's chameleons. Now, the species we have here is not a species from Madagascar. This is the uh, veiled chameleon or Yemen chameleon, and they are found in, of course, Yemen and in parts of Saudi Arabia as well, uh, which most people typically associate as being a very harsh, arid environment. And certainly there are parts of the country um, that are very remote, very arid, and they're largely desert. Um, but the veiled chameleon here, here of course, uh, will spend most of his time on the uh, coastal areas where you have a lot more vegetation and where it stays a little bit cooler. Now, chameleons, of course, are an animal that uh, a lot of people do associate with camouflage. And there is actually a lot of, uh, I guess, myths surrounding the fact that chameleons can uh, change their color to blend with their environment. Now, of course, where they're primarily spending their time is in trees, and most chameleons are green in color. So in that respect, uh, quite incredible camouflage, uh, which enables them to blend in very, very well with the foliage, but they primarily will actually change their color um, to suit their mood. So you can see um, this one's largely green. He's got a bit of yellow and some darker browns on him. He's probably not too happy at the moment. Um, he typically will give us a nice flash of color um, when he's a little bit annoyed, but when they're uh, calm and they're resting in a tree, um, they typically are more of a uniform green color. So they will actually use their color um, to basically tell you a bit about how they feel. Now they'll also use it while they're gravid. The females are typically at their brightest when they're gravid or when they have eggs. Um, or some chameleons also give birth to live young. An example of that would be the very large Jackson's chameleon um, from East Africa. Now they'll also uh, display colors very vibrantly um, when a male sees another male. So they use it as a bit of a territorial dispute thing as well. Now, we're gonna pop our chameleon down onto these branches here. Let him go for a bit of a walk. And you'll notice on the feet of the chameleon, um, they basically have almost like a glove foot, which they use for gripping on to the uh, thin branches that they spend most of their time in. Now we're gonna leave him there. We'll probably go for a bit of a walk around. And we're gonna come over uh, to this one here. This is one of my favorite species of snake. It is a venomous snake, so I'm gonna be a little bit cautious in the way that we open this lid. Um, but in saying that, one of our smaller Australian venomous snakes, and one that is also very easy um, to identify. They're very um, unique as far as our Australian venomous snakes go. Now, right now, kind of looks a little bit like uh, a box of leaves and uh, certainly you might be fooled into thinking there is nothing in here, perhaps the snakes escaped. That is certainly not the case. Death adders, um, which is the species we're gonna have a look at, they are masters of camouflage. You can actually see the head of the snake right here. And this is exactly what a death adder would do out in the wild in order to ambush their prey. Unlike most of our Australian venomous snakes, which are large active hunters and will actively move around in pursuit of their prey, a death adder relies on their camouflage and uh, it will mostly be curling up in leaf litter like this and waiting for something to come to it. Now, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna move a few of these leaves here and actually expose the death adder a little bit. And I'm also gonna expose the tail. Now the tail is gonna be very, very hard to see, but it's actually right here. That little yellow tip there of the tail is what we call a caudal lure. Now they'll use that in order to lure in their prey. So he might be feeding on out in the wild lizards or rodents, uh, perhaps even a bird would come down and investigate this lure. He's gonna move it around a little bit like it's doing there now. It looks quite reminiscent of a grub or a worm. And then basically what that snake will do is wait for that prey animal to get close enough. It will then strike out 
um, grab that prey animal and just like that it's got a little bit of dinner a very very uh, genius way of obtaining its food now I'm gonna expose the whole snake here now so we can see him but as I mentioned this is exactly what they would do out in the wild they would sit in a beautiful ambush position like this you can see he's in sort of an S position as well and that enables them to strike out um, very, very quickly, the Death Adder actually has the fastest strike of uh, any Australian venomous snake. Alright, now we're going to move on to another animal over here. We've popped our chameleon away, but in here, another animal that's very, very good at camouflaging, and that is uh, geckos. Now here in Australia we have about 175 species of gecko and out of all the species that occur in this country I would say that the leaf-tailed geckos, um, which can be found along the east coast up into North Queensland, they are easily the best at blending in. They will usually sit on the uh, side of a tree and their scalation and their coloration looks very very similar to the bark that occurs on those trees. It makes it very very hard um, to see those animals. Now this here is not an Australian species, but another species that will do uh, just that as well. They sit on the edge of trees, on the side of trees, and blend in very, very well. This is known as the New Caledonian Giant Gecko, and they are the world's largest species of gecko. You can see this one here, he's a male, um, and he's about maybe 12 inches, 30 centimeters in length. Um, that is very, very large for a gecko. To give you a bit of a comparison, our largest Australian gecko might get to 20 centimetres. So this one here gets very, very large. And as you can see, if you get in nice and close, uh, beautiful eyes, very, very stunning eyes. And that is quite typical of most geckos. And you'll also notice that they do not blink. They never, ever blink. And that is because just like a snake, geckos do not have eyelids, so they don't have the ability to blink like we do. Um, so what they do in order to keep the eye clean, they'll actually reach their large tongue outside the mouth, outside the side of the mouth every now and again, and they lick their own eye. Pretty gross, but that's what they do to keep those eyes clean. Now they also have these feet. He's gonna climb me now, give you a perfect example, um, because they have tiny scales on the bottom of each toe, which we call lamellae, and uh, that enables him, as you can see, to go pretty well anywhere he wants. He can go on uh, up in a tree as high as he wants to get, and also he can climb uh, straight onto the top of my head. He instinctually goes for the highest point. Now, uh, I might be able to show you those scales there. You can see he's actually uh, gripped onto my finger right now. Beautiful animal. Out in the wild, of course, they're living in New Caledonia, as the name implies. There's those scales under there, if you can see them. Living very, very high in the trees, up to about 15 metres in height, potentially higher and uh, they would be primarily feeding on fruit, nectar, tree saps. So they've got a bit of a different diet to most other geckos, which are primarily feeding on invertebrates. I'm gonna pop him back onto that bark, and that will give you a bit of an example as to how well they can blend in with their surroundings. Incredible camouflage on this species and the most geckos for that matter. All right, you, could, you might lick his eye. We'll see if he does. He's starting to lick the front of his mouth and uh, that's typically how it starts out and then they work their way around to the eye. I'll keep an eye on him while we answer some questions and if he starts to lick his eye, I'll let you know and we can uh, get in for a nice close look. So just in regards to camouflage, oh. with some of the species, like with the chameleon, they do have a little bit of the ability to be able to change their colour. So what, you know, gives the chameleon that ability to be able to do that? Yeah, it's an incredible uh, adaptation that they have. And uh, basically what it comes down to is tiny uh, cells inside the skin of the reptile, which are called chromatophores. It's a bit of a fancy word, but those tiny cells um, actually uh, allow that animal to change their colour slightly. And um, yeah, it's a very fascinating adaptation. Is, that, is it only chameleons that have that ability? No, there's, um, there's many reptiles that will change colour. In fact, some snakes will change their colour uh, from night to day. Um, others will, of course, uh, do it, as I mentioned, with the chameleon uh, with, to go with their moods. So there's a variety of different reasons that they might change colour. Um, and camouflage is a big one of those. Um, but it's not the only reason. And uh, yeah, it occurs across, across a wide variety of species. So what are some adaptations in camouflage that would differentiate, I guess, reptiles from mammals? Like um, across Australia, do you find in the desert, 
red reptiles. Yeah. Yeah, so it tends to be a common theme across across most animals um, that their colour um, is very well suited to where they occur. For example, a polar bear, a classic example, you've got a very large bear, um, but it's white in colour because it's living in very cold uh, environments that are covered in snow. It allows that animal, even though it's an incredibly large animal, um, that doesn't really have much of a threat um, in terms of predation, to blend in. Dingo is another example. Um, we see three different colour forms of dingo and they virtually translate to where they occur. So your alpine dingo, which is more of a white colour as opposed to the typical gold, they're occurring in areas again where it snows. So um, right across wildlife in general, uh, there is a wide variety of um, species that are well suited to the environments that they come from. Uh, back to the chameleon, what's their lifespan like? Uh, it does depend on the species, but unfortunately for most chameleons, it is uh, a very short lifespan. The veiled chameleon in particular, um, incredibly short in the wild. In fact, females are typically living less than a year in the wild. Um, basically, they're growing up within the first few months, they're becoming reproductive, they're breeding, and then they're dying, and that generations just go on like that. Now in captivity, that life can be lengthened a little bit, um, but in saying that, still very short. Um, about seven to eight years would be absolute maximum for uh, a male veiled chameleon, which was, is what we had. And uh, unfortunately, he is getting on as well. He is about that uh, six, seven year age, uh, basically, group. Uh, so back to the chameleons as well. We've got lots of questions coming in about them. You mentioned before uh, about egg laying. So yep. can you just go through that just one more time? Yeah, absolutely. So um, depending on the species of chameleon you're talking about will depend on whether it is an egg laying species or a, what we call a live bearing species. And uh, for the most part, the chameleons that occur at higher elevations where it's a little bit cooler will be live bearing species. And this includes a lot of species from Kenya, Tanzania, these higher montane species or mountainous species. The veiled chameleon and many chameleons from Madagascar, they're living in warmer environments where eggs can incubate quite easily. And so they are laying eggs. Um, but basically what happens, the females and the males, they mate and then uh, the females will develop sometimes a lot of eggs inside them and then they'll basically go to the ground, dig a hole in the ground and uh, deposit those eggs in order for them to incubate. And what about geckos? Do they only lay eggs? Uh, they do, yes. So um, this species here in particular, because it is so large, lays uh, very, very large eggs and uh, typically quite small clutches as well. We might see five or six slightly larger eggs as opposed to 20 or 30 very small eggs in the uh, case of the veiled chameleon. So it just depends. Now I think we're going to get an eye lick here. <laughs> Although I've jinxed myself and he stopped. But you notice the tongue is very, very large. It's bright pink. And there we go. And he uh, uses the tongue to keep that eye moist, just like we would do as we blink. Um, so the gecko can't blink, so he uses that tongue. Just another fantastic adaptation aside from uh, their phenomenal camouflage. And one last question about camouflage. Um, is it just their skin color that they can utilize to camouflage or can they change their body shape? Like, and I guess this goes across all reptiles. Yeah, absolutely. There's a variety of things that they can use in order to uh, basically provide camouflage for themselves. One of the big ones that reptiles will do is um, they'll have special adaptations along their scales. For example, the uh, leaf-tailed geckos from Madagascar, they get almost this size um, and they are perhaps the best reptiles at blending in. You can virtually not see them. If you did not know that one was there, it would be very, very hard to differentiate between that group of geckos and the side of a tree. And the reason they're so good at it is not because just because of the uh, color they are, but also because they have special scales that run along the side of the body and along the legs and the feet, which flatten out. Basically makes them even flatter to the surface and near impossible to see. So there is a few things that they'll do um, in order to assist them with that camouflage aside from color. Now this guy's been quite adventurous here this afternoon. I'm worried he's gonna bite me, so uh, we better get him uh, back into his enclosure, one of my favorites, as are Death Adders and the Chameleon we saw. Hope you enjoyed that, guys, and you learned a little bit, a bit, a bit about reptilian camouflage. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.